I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. At the bottom of the rig is a one-ounce John Skinner S&S bucktail. Above that is uh, something new for this trip. It came out recently. It's a tsunami glass minnow, but it's got a silicone skirt, and uh, we're going to be using curly long otter tails also. And the, the nice thing about this uh, tsunami glass minnow is it's got a new longer hook with bait holder barbs on there. So you saw that six inch gulp grub went on there, fit beautifully. Of course it does, they designed it that way, um, but the bait holder barbs really keep it on there. This looks really good, it, it, and uh, this is really, it, it's the second shot that I'm getting with this on, a, on the previous trip. I had tried it a couple times on a few fish and it seemed great, so uh, I'm gonna stick with it this trip and uh, let's see how it works out. All right, so look at that. I've got um, a gulp grub, but the tail's bit off. And anybody who fishes these things has this happen all the time. And uh, sea bass, other things, they bite the tails off, and then what do you do with them? Well, here's a, a great solution. Um, stick an otter tail over it, so you'll still have your gulp grub. You'll still have that scent. That otter tail just gives fantastic action and makes a great combination. Because I moved in the off-season, this is yet another piece of water I haven't fished before. I had fished inshore a little bit on this trip and I uh, wasn't doing well. Decided to move out here. Um, in, I, I dropped into about 40 feet of water. I know I've got a slope behind me. I could see it on, on the Navionics uh, chart on my fish finder. And I was surprised the one-ounce bucktail got down there. It didn't stay down there very long. Uh, I hooked up immediately. So... Yeah, you, you know, a trip starts like this and you think, oh my God, you know, this is going to be great. Well, um, this is a lot of fun. I'm going to catch a lot of fish on this trip. But fluke-wise, this was a tough one. But, hey, this was a fantastic start. I just dropped down. Uh, first time in new spot. In fact, you probably saw me reach over, grab a GPS mark uh, before I even had the fish like halfway up because I, I wanted a mark on this spot. So, great start here. And... Um, this fish did indeed grab the bucktail um, with that stub of a gulp. Uh, it was actually a five inch gulp swimming mullet with the tail bit off. And then I laid a um, otter tail, uh, the large one. It's um, six and a half inches curly tail over that. It's a great combination, works well. So by the time I got that fish into the bleed out bucket, it was, uh, I just ran right back up current. I've got about a 1.6 mile an hour drift, so it's kind of fast. So it was even more surprising the one ounce stayed down. But uh, yeah, with a start like that, I'm real anxious to make that next drift and, and see what I've gotten. Uh, lo and behold, I'm hooked up well again. Um, although it didn't take long for me to wonder what this was because I didn't feel the familiar fluke shakes on there. and. Uh, what came up was kind of a surprise. Oh, holy shit. Oh my god. So yeah, I'm talking to myself out there over this one. Uh, two beautiful sea bass and of course, this is, you know, within days of when the season's going to open, so both of these fish have to go back, and, boy, both of those fish would have been great uh, cooked up and on a dinner plate, but, oh well, uh, they're going to have to go back, but, yeah, there's a couple of beauties. Here's drift number three on the spot. So this one's ripping line. <laughs> um, 
probably not a fluke. I'm not feeling the head shakes. That's going to be one heck of a sea bass if it's going to run like that. So, and it does not feel like a bluefish. I just don't get too many stripers with the rapid uh, vertical jigging that I do for fluke. I don't know why that is, but uh, here's one. And uh, yeah, I could take this one home if I want. The limit is 28 inches. This one's definitely over. I really prefer eating fluke. Um, and I'm hoping to be eating sea bass a couple days after this when the season opens. So this guy's going to get to go back. Again, hit the bucktail uh, with the otter strip on there. So I'm dropping down uh, in about 40 feet of water at the beginning of the drift and then I'm coming up a slope and there's a high spot around 30 feet, 28 feet or so, then I start dropping back. So that's what the drift consists of. You start deep, you go up the slope, you go across the top, down the slope. Once I hit like 45 feet, um, I, I pull up and uh, redo the drift. So this that striper hit early enough in the drift that um, I'm able to put back down again. I'm still uh, sitting in... Uh, probably like 32, 33 feet of water when I release that bass and uh, I had time to hook up again. So I knew the hook on this teaser was going to be a real winner. The, the one concern I had was how well the silicone skirt would hold up. So this trip was a great test of that because I caught a lot of fish. Uh, the skirt held up fine. Occasionally it will get pulled down off the head and it's not a problem. You just push it right back up on the head and it stays there um, just like it was when it came out of the package. But what I like is this right here that you can reset that grub, push it up there and the bait holder barbs keep it on there. Uh, amazingly on this trip, despite the fact that I end up dealing with a lot of sea bass, um, I only go through two of those six inch grubs on that top hook so that's a real winner so the rod is a tsunami classic six and a half foot rated 10 to 20 pound test line the reels a quantum accurate it's spooled with 15 pound test spider wire ultra cast <coughs> at the bottom the rig is I'm using 25 pound test fluorocarbon on this rig um, a loop on the bottom for the bucktail, one foot above that is a dropper loop for the teaser and uh, there's a video on my channel that shows exactly how to tie that. Uh, the John Skinner bucktails are made by S&S to my specifications. Uh, they're in several tackle stores now. The one I know for sure, J&H Tackle, Oakdale, Long Island, uh, in the store and online. So uh, it's another really nice sea bass. Boy, it's one after another. I have to wonder if uh, these things are going to hang around long enough for the season to open. It always seems like when you get on stuff like this and it's out of season, as soon as the season opens, it's almost like they know when they disappear. But uh, I'll find out. I'm not done catching fluke yet, but I got to tell you, drift after drift, after having that first one so quickly, you know, I just had it in my head that, you know, that can't be the only one. There's certainly got to be more out here to be caught. Um, I got to think it may uh, have been a little more difficult with so many sea bass around because, you know, I was spending a lot of time on them and, you know, you hooked up on those and the, maybe the fluke don't get as much of a chance. But well, this was fun anyway. The sea bass were a lot of fun on this gear, uh, but the main target is definitely fluke.
Uh, the hit was different on this. I, I knew this was going to be something different. So I certainly don't want to encounter too many of these on a fluke trip because you know, ooh, they could make a mess of the rig. So uh, yeah, I don't want to net this one. Um, can't swing it. So kind of trying to get it to calm down a little bit. I'll just grab it by the tail, uh, hoping not to lose my bucktail on this. So that was an extremely cooperative nice. bluefish. Uh, this is really important. After you catch a bluefish, check your rig. Make sure it didn't fray something. It could easily nick, uh, nick the line, and that could cost you a nice fish. You saw there, it did bite that otter tail in half. Um, yeah, otter tails hold up quite well normally, um, but hey, bluefish are tough, and uh, that one just snipped it right off. Yeah, so keep an eye on this. Similar to when you fish with pork rind, a lot of times a fish can come over the strip and then you end up setting the hook uh, through the strip. And, you know, that's probably not how you want it hooked on there. So when you get a fish, you just, you know, take a glance on it and make sure everything looks right. All right, so finally, I've got a second fluke, uh, a decent one at that. Um, but I got to tell you, no matter how hard I tried, uh, there was no getting that third one. The limit is three fish, and I certainly wanted to get a third, and it did not happen. Um, I did, however, end up catching more sea bass and you know more big ones. Uh, the total on sea bass for this trip was 16, and there was nothing that was uh, below what is the, the minimum size limit of 15 inches. A lot of them were 18 to 20 inches, maybe some better. It was just really nice ones. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll see if they hang around. And um, uh, th I'm sure they won't all disappear. But, um, yeah, this was a great trip. Uh, nice mixed bag. And that tsunami skirt held up extremely well. So, all right, I hope you found this useful. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.